You have to forge your own path in Hollywood. To succeed, there's not a, just a traditional path and this is how you do it. You have to find your own voice and your own path and you'll find the people who will champion and believe in you to help you make your work. And we're always looking for the right champions and supporters to help us. Hi, Hi. Aaron. Hi, Jita. Jita, right? Jita, nice to meet you. Jita, sorry. Thank nice you. To meet you. Nice to meet. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure to talk to you both to talk about this movie that I have so much fun watching. Oh, <laughs> so, that's great to hear. Thank you. That's great. It was great. So, my first question is a very serious one. Did you guys clip coupons? Coupons? <laughs> We certainly have, yes. And uh, my my mom was a huge coupon clipper, uh, and we. Yeah. Gita was just using one <laughs> the other day. Yeah. I'm I'm all about getting a good deal. To me, to be honest, I feel like if anyone wants to use a coupon, they're really smart in the U.S. because why pay full price if you can get something with a little money off? <laughs> She came out of the store and on the receipt it had like a two dollar off coupon. And she said, oh, I have to go back in and use this. So she went back in the store yeah. and used it and came back up. I just didn't know the next time I was going to be back in the store. So I was like, <laughs> I better just do it now while I have this $2 coupon. Exactly. I also have a, a, a lot of them, but not as much as the, the characters in the movie and some crazy people out there. They have like those binders, crazy selection, the dates. And I think it's it's incredible how they do that so i know the inspiration is a is a true story but what was about these like clipping coupons crazy ladies going in the supermarket and still using the coupons that got your attention and wanted you to to make this movie i mean i think it, it really did come from hearing that these women had made millions of dollars using counterfeit coupons and then that postal inspectors were involved and mm -hmm. it all just yeah. seemed like so unique in the story we had never heard anything like it before and it felt like it could be a comedy and i think in the time we were making it we wanted to do something where we're sort of our previous work is very dramatic and documentaries and we wanted to do something that felt like we could have fun as we did it um because we there was a lot of like darkness in the world at that time with yeah. with covid and yeah we hope that we told our cast and crew making this movie, this is a chance for us to bring joy and happiness when this movie is done. And hopefully people come through this and feel like they need some laughter in their lives that they could be with their family and friends and just laugh. And also if you're finding yourself undervalued or discounted in life, hopefully you find your own personal loophole to find self-worth. Yeah. Aaron, for you, like how, how was like this transition to to direct and do a documentary and now do this uh, feature like with a bigger budget and everything. How was this transition for you? I mean, I think um, in many ways it was the same as how we would tackle any movie, but then, you know, we made it during the pandemic, which, you know, presented a lot of challenges and keeping everyone on set safe. And, mm -hmm. but then, you know, having more money doesn't always make anything easier in Hollywood. I think it's still, you know, the budget is always too small for what you're trying to do. Everything is always a, a challenge like that. So to, to us, it felt very much like other movies that we've made. The biggest difference was that it was a comedy and it was working with comedic actors, but still wanting it to feel grounded and real. And, you know, we would tell our actors every day, your character doesn't know that they're in a comedy. Their life is a drama. Uh, and that was something important for us that, you know, a lot of the story beats and what they're going through is very dramatic for them, but can be funny to us. Exactly. And for you, Jira, uh, I want to ask you, like, because this is like a family affair, <laughs> I think, because you work with your husband and everything. How did you balance that, like work with him and then <laughs> live with him at the same time? <laughs> you didn't balance it. <laughs> we don't have a perfect balance of that because, you know, when you are working from your home as well, it's 24-7. So we're still working on that part of the balance. 
But one thing that I we, think we say yeah. it's almost like we bring the entire casting crew into our marriage. Very much <laughs> true. And I think to do that, you have to have a strong marriage where it comes from a place of love and respect for each other and that you want to see the best for each other. And I think that's what we want for our cast and crew and we hope that's what they want for us. But to, in the creative process for how we work as a married couple, before we sit down to write or to work together every day, there takes a lot of marriage therapy in it. It's really meditating, going for a hike together, doing some journal writing and getting into a spot where we feel like okay, now we can sit and be creative with each other. And in fact, on our computer, when we're writing, we have a note that just says, be open to each other's ideas, because sometimes we end up forgetting that and our egos are struggling because we have such a great idea or we think we have such a great idea that we don't listen to the other person. And so that's a reminder that the, the best way you can have a relationship is to just listen. Got it. And, and now for uh, come back to you, Aaron. Uh, you spoke a little bit about the challenges, and I understand that you've been, you guys, been working in this, in this, in this like uh, uh, script for quite some time. And what did it change? That what do you think that changed that everybody got attention to you guys and to the script that we were able to make it to the big screen? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we, we had struggled. We had written other scripts that had bigger budgets and we had struggled to get any of them made. And we would go out and we would get some actors on board and we would go to financiers and we would be in the room with them and they'd say, oh, we really love the script and we love the actors you have on board, but you two don't have any value. And we kept hearing that you don't have any value. And we didn't realize it as we were writing the script, but... You know, we wrote a movie about these two women that felt like they were undervalued, that found this loophole to get around that and succeed. And at the moment, you know, we finally realized, oh, we were really kind of channeling how we were feeling and putting ourselves into those characters. And there's a lot of Connie and- in, in yeah, For sure, and Jojo and Aaron. <laughs> so, you know, for us, it felt like it all finally clicked where we, we wrote this script that was a comedy and was a little lower budget and we got the right actors on board and we finally got to make a movie. But at the same time, it was sort of self-fulfilling where you know, it, it gave us more value in the industry. And so yeah. it feels like, uh, it feels good that we, we told a story that was very personal to us that also helped us find a loophole to hopefully succeed in the future. I, I really enjoy watching the movie. I think it was, uh, it was great. It's a, it was a great story. It is a great story. And also the cast you mentioned about the cast is fantastic. Kristen Bell and, and Vince Vaughn, Paul, I loved I love oh, Kirby and great. everything. How did you guys like were able to get them on board? You know, can you talk a little bit about it? Gita. <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, so, you know, Connie's role is very specific. She, you know, on the surface, it seems like she's making these bad choices, committing crimes, but we knew that she still had to be very likable. And what's very unique about Kristen Bell is that she has this characteristic of, and she'll, she'll admit this, that if she's making bad choices as a character, audiences still love her. So that was such an important factor for this role of Connie. And so she was perfect for the role. And Kristen's a real go-getter yeah. and ambitious in the same way Connie is. hundred percent. She fit that role so perfectly. And then, you know, she had a great relationship with Kirby and we were looking to find the right Jojo and we had been looking for a while and Kristen suggested Kirby Hell Baptiste. So we had Kirby over to her house for like five hours eating samosas and drinking Indian tea. And we instantly knew she was supposed to play Jojo. And then Paul and Vince um, just had such great chemistry. We knew when we met Paul and we sat with him that he was our Ken. He, we also were just really excited because people hadn't seen Paul in such a comedic role before. So we thought this was a great opportunity to show another side of Paul and just be really fresh with that casting choice. And Vince is just a comedy icon, right? So to play off with Paul is just perfect pairing. And he and Paul had a relationship yeah. off camera where they had a friendship and were hoping to work together. So it all kind of clicked where both yeah. duos 
had a friendship beyond the movie, and their chemistry was just so great. I, I love I, I love him too, that Paul, because there's a he has a sense of humor. Like even though he's not, I, I love it. I just I think he he was great. Like he he wants to be. He's a, just a a secure not just a security guy, but he was he wants to be a police an FBI and. He has the, his face is amazing. I love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he, he can be making you laugh, but then there's real yeah. emotion there and heart there, and there's just so yeah. many layers to to him. We we just think he's great. Yeah, and as a, as a director, like both of you, like what was like the most challenge part for you uh, on the point of view of a director when like filming was aside from the pandemic, the COVID, all this guidelines and protocols that we have right now yeah i mean beyond that i think i mean that affected a lot of it because beyond that it was okay you know we had to change the way that we envisioned the movie because so many things were shut down we couldn't shoot it exactly how we had wanted to mm -hmm. so it was yeah. figuring out like how can we still make this feel like yeah. the world and the story we wanted to tell uh yeah. and, and then you know even in in post production as directors you know normally you would do a lot of test screenings with a comedy you want to see how audiences are responding to it yeah. and we couldn't really do that and you know even hearing you say how much you enjoyed it you know it's it's some of the first feedback that we've gotten so even today is like a special day where we're hearing oh yeah, people are enjoying the movie and you you enjoyed it when you watched it and So it, even right up to today, it's been a, a challenge, I think, in making a comedy in a different way than most comedies are made. Oh yeah, that that's for sure. And and I I really like as I said to you, I can express enough to say that I really enjoy and I and I hope everybody's gonna like it. I I hope so. And you did too. yes, and and aside from from the from this project you guys are working already have something in mind another feature another documentary that you can mention or talk to yeah we're um we're working on putting together right now the film that is a dramatic thriller that we're excited about it's the true story of a boston journalist who investigates the Sackler family who are the makers of oxycontin and own the company purdue pharma And we just are really passionate about that story. And so much more dramatic, but such an important story to yeah. tell. Yeah. And so we're really excited to get that film off the ground and hopefully a few other projects that we have right now that we're also casting. So um, both of those are more dramatic films, but we're also looking for our next comedy. Right. Maybe Queen's too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never know. <laughs> yeah. So also, I want to uh, ask you, like you guys went through this, like, try to get the, 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 the script out, the move out. What advice you have to someone that wanna pursue or wanna have, get to this point that you guys got it? Do you have an advice to give to those people that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. always believe in yourself and bet on yourself. You know, mm -hmm. I think even as we were hearing, you don't have value in the industry, we never felt like they were right. And we always felt like, well, okay, we're going to change that equation. We're going to bet on ourselves. Every success we've had has always began with us betting on ourselves and, and betting that we, if we invest in ourselves, we'll take a step forward. And I think anybody that's trying to write a movie, the biggest thing is to just finish the script, you know, uh, a script that is 80% written is is worthless but when you finish the script now it's like this asset that you've created that you can use to now try to go make a movie so you always have to finish what you start absolutely and i think you know as aaron mentioned keep betting on yourself don't everybody the the common saying here in hollywood is nobody knows anything in hollywood and that's something that William Goldman, I don't know if I said it, the exact yeah, quote the right way, really but true. it's very true. <laughs> Nobody knows anything. So you have to believe in yourself and you have to path, you have to forge your own path in Hollywood. To succeed, there's not a, just a traditional path and this is how you do it. You have to find your own voice and your own path and you'll find the people who will champion and believe in you to help you make your work. And we're always looking for the right champions and supporters to help us. Amazing. 
You know, it was such a pleasure to talk to you both. I love the movie. I think everybody's gonna like it as well. And I just want to thank you so much for your time, Aaron, Aaron Dita, Dita. And I'm sorry if I said it wrong, but no thank problem. you so much. And a it's pleasure to talk to you. you. Thanks so Thanks. much. Thank great you. Time. I cannot wait for, for your next project. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. If you like this video, don't forget to comment, to like, and subscribe to our channel right here.